Welcome back, Source Nation. You're listening live to The Pendulum with Dr. Samori Swigert. Right, Source Nation, welcome back to the Pendulum. Once again, I'm your host, Dr. Samori Swigert. As I stated earlier, we have a special guest tonight in the studio with us. And that guest is Mr. Tyrone S. Mitchell. And Tyrone, as I gave you his pedigree earlier, he is a financial advisor, a wealth advisor. He's trained in financial risk management, life insurance, and a plethora of other um, financial economic uh, things. I had to reach out to him because we have to get an understanding of the future of currency and also a, a, a brief history of where we've come from with currency in the United States and how that affects the economy and everything. With all that being said, Mr. Tyrone S. Mitchell, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, my brother. How are you tonight? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm feeling very enthusiastic. Um, you know, we had spoke earlier in the week, and uh, you really uh, blew my mind with a lot of history and, and just concepts that I think we probably need to think about. So um, glad, glad to just, you know, have you here um, talking with us. Well, I, 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 so, I think when you and I get to come, well, when you and I get to talk, we need to record it because there's a lot of information that we shared the other night. I don't think we're going to have enough time to get in today, but we're going to do our best. <laughs> all right, all right, no problem, no problem at all. And, and the thing is, you know, we, you and I, we can talk all day, and then we'll mess around and lose time. So I want to make sure before any of that even happens, how can people get in contact with you? What, what, what's your what's your oh, contact man. info? Well, the best thing to do, first of all, if you listen to the Doctor Swaggett at eight o'clock, all you have to do is just tune in at six o'clock. Uh, mm-hmm. I run the, the, the 6 o'clock program, Power Over Tomorrow. Uh, from mm-hmm. there, you can get in contact with me on my website at tsmitchell.com. Of course, it's tsmitchell.com. You can sign up for our financial newsletters that we produce, newsletters, videos, um, each and every month. Along with that, you can download our financial app. It's a free financial app that we make available to, to everyone. Going by going on to the website, you can download it to your smartphone, um, and from there, you know, you can shoot us an email. But most importantly, just just reach out to us by just giving us a call at eight zero three three four eight four four eight three. All right, all right, everybody, you heard that. All right, so let's let's jump into it. Um, now, Brother Mitchell, uh, got some questions for you. Um, I go to CVS. Um, Sometimes I'll go to um, Rite Aid. Uh, I may go to Giants, you know, so the grocery store. And, you know, in these different marketplaces, I'm seeing signs like uh, chip only and credit card only, debit, credit, and EBT only. Um, I'm on the Internet. I'm seeing articles like, oh, you know, Bitcoin is set to rise, you know, Bitcoin this and cryptocurrency that. Are we ultimately moving to a cashless society? What's your take on that? To some degree, we are already there. Mm -hmm. Uh, A lot, I mean, we we are seeing points where money is not even necessary. I I remember the days when I was growing up. uh, You know, the old term that calls, you know, that that says when you drop a dime. And I asked a mm-hmm. young man one time, I said, what, what do you think that term came from? He said, he said, I don't know. I said, the term drop a dime was when we would uh, keep a dime in our pocket because in, in case of an emergency, it cost a dime to make a phone call. And, mm-hmm. and there were public, you know, uh, there were phone, uh, telephone booths on every corner. 
And so if something came up, that's how we did it. We drop, you know, we put a dime in the phone or we call for help or we call somebody to talk to them. Um, and then by the time the, the, the 80s and 90s came around, they went from a dime to 25 cents. And now that we're in this new millennium, you know, at, at this point, you know, it's cell phones. Uh, so you, you don't see the aspects of, of, of telephone booths anymore. So that simple illustration just showed you how we went from carrying currency in our pocket just to make a phone call to where we don't even need phone booths to say anymore. And, that, mm. and this thing that we have called the smartphone, it, it, it is geared to be the, uh, um, the go-to mechanism for basically everything that we want to do. Our contacts, they, run, they are small microchips and computers that are inside. When we go to our CVSs, when we go to our uh, Starbucks, when we go to these places, we are often encouraged, we are often encouraged not to use cash but to place our phone so it can be scanned and money mm-hmm. transferred directly to their account. So a cashless society is already here. Mm. Uh, but we're just seeing it. You know, We may not be hit with the full tidal wave of it, but the tide is rising. The tide is, is getting higher. And, and, and these things, that was like we talked about a little bit more about cryptocurrency, um, that stuff is starting to change on certain markets. So when money is being made, oh, let me correct that. When the value of something is being made, that's when it drives greater interest, and that's what we mm-hmm. and that's what we're hearing about these uh, bitcoins and and cryptocurrency. It's a value that folks are placing on it that makes it uh, act as if it's currency. Mm. Mm. Now, you know, it's interesting. The other thing when we were talking earlier. Um, you know, sometimes Hollywood has a way of throwing the curveballs or giving you the heads up before things are actually ushered in over the horizon. And, you know, there's like a lot of dystopian films. One one film that I like in particular that I was telling you about is this movie called In Time uh, with Justin Timberlake. And they mm-hmm. didn't use cash money. They were using time. So it was like, whereas, you know, you have um, a dime, a nickel, a penny, a dollar bill, $5, $10, you you use time depending on how much time you had depending on how wealthy you are. So like when you have the rich one percent, they would have like centuries on their arm, you know. And, and, and the poor, they had like you know, well, only got like a few hours left. And then once you ran out of time, that was it. You you died. And the other thing you told me the other day was you know anything can be currency. And then I just started thinking I was like that's true. Like you know. Even when you look at prison, you know, they will use cigarettes as currency or, you know, or, or even, you know, people, you know, like, well, you take this guy here and he's going to be exchanged for X, Y, and Z. So that's right. the, the thing that I want to know is how should we think of money now? Now we have, you know, as of now, we have different mediums of currency. We have the paper dollar. We have coins. We still have the credit cards and all that. How should we be thinking about money in the future? If that if that if that what, brings any type. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the way we should think about money in the future um, must be better than the way we think about money now. And and mm-hmm. I'm and I'm taking it from a standpoint uh, of as an advisor. We live in a society that is built upon material. And when we look upon money as, as, as something that we use to buy things, then we have to be very careful because if we are talking about this, you know, I want our audience to understand how we're working with this here, is that if we, the things that we buy, eventually they depreciate. And that depreciation is what? Depreciation of value. Mm-hmm. Just a few months ago, I would tell folks that, you know, during that holiday season, we spend money we don't have to buy things we don't need to impress folks we don't like. And mm-hmm. after that holiday season is over, what happens with the things that we bought? It begins to depreciate in value. 
So how should we treat money now or how should we treat money in the future? We should treat money to the point where it buys us a value that appreciates and not depreciates. Mm. What I mean by that is if you're going to make money, make your money, make money. There are two ways to make money legally in this country. And that is uh, uh, you work or your money works. We spend too much time working for the money, but yet we don't use the money to make more money. So when we're thinking about these things that they're talking about, uh, how the transference of value would move from, you know, you said paper money, but we had a little talk about that too, right? <laughs> is, that, yeah, yeah. is that money is not made of paper. All right, and this goes back to to the uh, the show that I did called "Are You Still a Slave to Cotton?" Uh, mm-hmm. In America, the money that we have is not made of paper because paper is too easily destroyed. It is made of seventy five percent cotton and twenty five percent linen, and then it, it is also embedded with silk. So the bulk of our our currency is 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 made from cotton. The same type of cotton or the same uh, uh, material that this country was built on, that Wall Street was built on, on the backs of folks kidnapped from Africa to to develop this country. So cotton has been around for over 400 years in one form or another, and it's still enslaving folks. So what I'm saying to this uh, is about this, is that when we talk about the currency and, and, and bitcoins and the future of money, we're talking about where is the value going to be placed. So mm-hmm. if we continue to uh, um, use money in a fashion that does not place it in a place where it's going to be of value, we will still and forever be struggling as a consumer and not uh, as a, 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 a conservator or a, a constructor. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, but Mitchell, I have another question for you. Uh, can you, all right, can you explain, because I know it's a, it's, it's a big, broad topic, like I said, to try and fit all that into one show is virtually impossible. Um, but, can you give a, a brief understanding of what is cryptocurrency and what's it backed by? Like, you know, you would you were teaching me how the U.S. used to be based on the gold standard until Nixon came and then took it off the gold standard and, you know, all of that. What, you know, what what is this stuff? What is what is, what are cryptocurrencies and, and what are they backed by? All right. Well, cryptocurrency, uh, one of the cryptocurrencies is, is – um, Futuristic, I'm I'm almost getting ready to quote uh, Craig Mack, futuristic George (laughs) Jetson. Well, he was an American linguist, okay? (laughs) Mm -hmm. But what it is, is um, there are a group of people that wanted to start working and trading with each other. So instead of using the American currency, they began to they develop something, and it is called cryptocurrency. It's, it's not money exchanging hands, but it's just a it's an algorithmic uh, uh, value, and they trade back and forth. And there are certain levels that the one we we talk about is called Bitcoin. Uh, from Bitcoin, then there's another one that's called um, Ether. Um, mm-hmm. Just give you a difference. It's, it's, it's similar. Like a Bitcoin would be a thousand dollar bill, an Ether would be a twenty dollar bill. So they have yeah. different, the smaller ones that are of have different value. Now the key to about uh, key to all of this cryptocurrency is that the values change drastically, uh, and mm-hmm. the reason why they change is because there is no central authority over the value. So what they do mm. is that they limit they limit the um, number of, of uh, I don't want to say shares, but they limit the number of 
of bitcoins units. or uh, units. Thank you. They limit the number of units that are out there, and they do that so that it can maintain a certain value. Okay. Um, but with the American currency and many of the countries around the world, we have central banks. We have the Central Bank of Europe. We have the Central Bank of Asia. We have um, the American Central Bank. And these central banks around the globe, they work together so that one bank or one currency is not so undervalued that it's not worth the paper that it's written on. There is um, – I saw a picture. I, I, I'm thinking it was Zimbabwe. Uh, I know it was an African country, but they have a million dollar bill. All Ooh. right. So whatever the, whatever they have, a million is a million dollars. But so when you go to buy bread in that country, it costs five hundred thousand dollars. All right. So a loaf of bread costs five hundred thousand. <laughs> So if they want to get a, uh, you know, if they want to get a, a bread or some milk, they're spending a million, you know, in their currency, a million dollars. So yeah. when you compare that currency, that type of currency, to the American dollar, uh, you know, if it only takes us maybe what two dollars and thirty nine cents to buy a loaf of bread. Right. So our dollar has has a has a higher value with uh, fewer units. Well, what they do with the with the units in, in cryptocurrency, they limit the amount that are out there. E- each and every year they build it up and the older ones fall off. Now, mm-hmm. they do this to maintain a certain value. So that way when they're trading amongst each other, it's, it's a relative value that they, you know, that I would say they uh, um, choose to, to accept. Now, mm-hmm. I was looking over some reports. You know, one thing about it is that the value on many of these Bitcoins or many of these currencies have grown uh, 89% over the last year, 115%. So that means whenever you hear about value growing on something, remember, it's it's called supply and demand. So when the uh, demand, when the, when the uh, demand is high and the supply is low, the value goes up. When the demand is low and the supply is high, the value goes down. So what mm-hmm. they do by, although they don't have a, a central uh, authority, it's more so, as we would say, a, uh, a gentleman's agreement that we're mm-hmm. going to maintain these values be- amongst us so that we can, pur- so that, not publicly, so that we can trade amongst ourselves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. So it okay. So all right, because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm assembling all this in my head. So in a way, could that be a way of conserving power and capital too? Like, I guess kind of saying like, if I have land and you want to purchase it, and I say, well, you know, I only deal in bitcoins. You would have to. In order for you to get my land, you have to get some bitcoins first, and then we could talk about exchanging real estate. Or am I off the meter? Well, you, I wouldn't think you're too off the meter, okay? And that's just my that's Ty, that's Tyrone Mitchellism, okay? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think you're too <laughs> off the meter, and and the reason why I say that is one of the key issues about this cryptocurrency, is that it is being used on a large-scale basis, but it's being mm-hmm. used in the, in the underground, in the black market. Mm-hmm. Okay? Uh, what I, what I, maybe I shouldn't even say black market because black is beautiful. <laughs> All right? so, but it's, it's being used in the underground market to where, uh, uh, in the criminal area. All right? Many times, you know, you have drug transactions. Uh, by drug cartel, okay? So they, they already know that, you know, they, they move a product, and the product gets destroyed, but they don't, they, you know, they still need their pay. So mm-hmm. one of the key areas that, that have been looked at by the IRS and the DEA and the ATF is how the, 
the, the underworld is using cryptocurrency to, mm-hmm. um, to transact business amongst themselves. And we also yeah. see this happening with um, uh, illegal activity from, what we say, from state to state, illegal activity that are being conducted by government agencies around the world. Uh, one issue that uh, I, I read about is, oh, you know, is it that we're seeing a rise in cryptocurrency among uh, terrorist groups? Mm. So it, it has brought up a lot of attention, but also what is up, what has come to to be seen and and heard is the fact that that this currency is growing. It's growing. Mm. Matter of fact, I was just telling uh, my son. I said, uh, in ten years, you will probably see more, I uh, guess, influence of cyber cyber currency than you will with the, uh, 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 you know, what we call our greenbacks. Right. And and the reason for that is because with technology is moving in that direction. Uh, more mm-hmm. so, you know, each and every day we are using technology and we're hardly ever carrying as much cash in our pocket. So we are slowly but surely getting accustomed to not using the the, the standard currency uh, but using more cyber currency. Well, being well, well groomed into it. Um, if you're just tuning in, this is the Pendulum. I'm your host, Dr. Troy Swagger. I'm on the phone. Well, I'm having a discussion with uh, Mr. Tyrone Mitchell, and he's talking about uh, the future of currency, cryptocurrency and, and bitcoins and these dis- digital um, monetary mediums that are being established. Um, so we're going in on all of this. Um, now, Brother Mitch, I have another question for you. Um, I would like to know, what do you think about the benefits and the risks? Because I, I, I say this. Um, now, it's not just Bitcoin because I know one thing they feel with Bitcoin is that it's supposed to be encrypted. So you really don't know who is the you who's the end user of it and you know who's who's putting it in and cuz they have like what's called a blockchain where it's That's pretty right. much like a, a open ledger and all transactions mm-hmm. are go through that ledger and it's supposed to be encrypted. So the IRS is like, well, we don't know all these exchanges are going on for, you know, different assets and goods, whatever the case may be. We don't know who this is. We don't know who these people are. So, I mean, it may be good on that end, but at the same time, cash is like that. You don't know if I don't introduce myself to you, you don't introduce yourself to me, but you just say, look, brother, I have a CD. It's $5. You whip out five. Yeah. Give me your $5. I'll give you the CD. We didn't have, you didn't have to tell me your name or anything. There's nothing to identify. All I know is I have a CD that you want. You gave me the $5 that it cost. So there's anonymity uh, established. But I feel like there's like a, a lot of risk involved when we start talking about this digital and cyber currency and exchanges. And um, I want to throw just a few out there, and I want to see if you kind of have anything to say. So what I think is some of the risks and dangers are the hackability of, of computer grids, um, hackability of accounts, um, hackability mm-hmm. of stock exchange. Because we, as we move towards the future, you know, we everything – we see it's become so cyberly integrated. You know, people, if you right. just have the knowledge, you might outsmart the person that puts your security system together. So the hackability of that. That's right. Um, if we're not talking about Bitcoin, but we're still talking about chips and Apple Pay and iPhone Pay and all that, that's tracking, that's real-time monitoring of how you spend your money, how much you spent, uh, what you purchased, who you spend your money with. It might identify religious affiliation, political affiliation. Um, and with that, you could be targeted because, like I said, with cash, it's anonymity. I don't know. Right. If, if, if I was the government, I wouldn't know how much money you went to, um, let's say you went to Home Depot, like I said before, and you might have bought 10 shovels and a flashlight for $120. The government wouldn't know that if I paid with cash. But now if you start getting more and more with these uh, – the digital currency in form, they'll know all of that. And then the thing is when you think of like uh when you think of how 
the media have maligned uh, Black Lives Matter or how they are maligning Muslims. Now, you know, it's the thing of where they can be like, okay, well, we see that they spend this money at the mosque. You know, maybe he's tithing because we're getting out of the cash in this society. We're not using dollars. We're using X, Y, and Z for currency. So he's right. using his money at the mosque for his um, offering. Um, he's interacting with Black Lives Matter. Let's shut his chip down. You know, so it, 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 it's just so many things. So I was just curious as to the risk and benefits of this whole future currency construct. Okay. Well, no matter where you go, there's always going to be a level of risk in relation to the level of benefit. Um, we, we say many times in the financial industry, the, the greater the risk, the greater the reward. Well, you have to take into consideration what is your risk tolerance. Okay, how much can you tolerate? Um, right now, when we're dealing with this idea of cyber currency, the one thing that we need or the one agency that we need to be mindful of is how well is the, uh, uh, the IRS going to tolerate this. Uh, there was something that you sent me earlier today that talked mm-hmm. about how, how, how the IRS is trying to get the names of, of the, the individuals or organizations or companies who are mm-hmm. using cyber currency to transact business. Um, because they're saying anything that you can transact business with to buy or sell things is an asset, and that asset has to be what? Tax. So mm-hmm. when, this was, when this was just a small concept between a few people, uh, it didn't bother them. But when you start to get big and begin to possibly make a change in the system, then you're going to get that, you're going to get their attention. Um, and that's what we have. And even the SEC is getting involved with the Securities and Exchange Commission. And mm-hmm. the reason why they're getting involved with this is because we have investments on the market right now called exchange-traded funds. Well, exchange-traded funds, ladies and gentlemen, truly it was the, bit, uh, was the Bitcoin or the cyber currency before cyber currency was ever invented. Because exchange-traded exchange, uh, traded funds, ETFs, were traded between the financial institutions. So they didn't really uh, uh, send money out. They, they, they placed a value on something and transact business be- amongst themselves. But once that got to a certain level, they, fought, they saw that they can begin to generate more money by opening it up and having it available for as an investment. That's why many of my clients now, we can – help them buy ETFs, exchange-traded funds. Well, guess what? Bitcoin is also an exchange-traded fund. Mm -hmm. So now we see that this small idea that was once established between a small group of people is becoming big business. And once it begins to become big business, that's when you have the government agencies coming in. And one thing that the IRS, according to the article you sent me, uh, is looking at, is trying to find out who owns what. So, mm-hmm. so presently, you still have a level of, what was that word you used, that $5 an- anonymity? Okay, once you are in that process, okay, so what you still have that anonymity amongst you. But when it gets to the point where the IRS is start, starting to take legal action against those who they who they believe are using uh, uh, cyber currency, then they're going to start f- trying to find a way to tax it. And so that, that's that's what it's about to try and find a way to tax it to make money off of it. Now, now you mentioned something about the another risk factor. Well, the mm-hmm. number one risk factor in the financial industry, the number one risk factor in the financial industry is cyber crime. Mm-hmm. Data breach. The financial industry, uh, I'm talking from the banks to the insurance companies, the, the uh, uh, wealth management companies, the number one thing that they always are fighting is data breach. Think about it. You can open up the paper any given time, or if we still use newspapers, but you can read somewhere that some company 
has lost uh, uh, a thousand transactions or, or, or a million uh, transactions. You, so, mm-hmm. and then we can name the names and the mm-hmm. Home Depot, Target, okay, yep. uh, um, uh, we'll, we'll or hospitals, Kmart, hospitals, mm-hmm. even school districts. You know, we live in, here in South Carolina, and don't you know the 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 uh, Department of Revenue got got hacked. So Ooh. what what are they extrapolating? They are extrapolating social security numbers. They are extrapolating dates of birth, transaction information. This is the risk that we live in today. And and what has this type of cyber risk uh, uh, gave birth to? It gave birth to a whole other uh, industry called cyber protection. So what, what do we end up doing? We're losing money. Now we got to spend money to help us protect the money we're losing. So there's always going to be a, a level of risk. So when we are dealing with, with, with cyber currency, the, the risk factor that's out there right now is the fact that, we, there, the, that the value is, is not under a, uh, uh, a central control. That's the risk factor. Because today it could be worth, all right, matter of fact, uh, I think it wasn't the Bitcoin. It was one of the ethers, the smaller ones. Um, they mm-hmm. said yesterday they lost 4.9 percent. So they lost mm-hmm. nearly five percent of their value. So that is like you have. I give you a dollar bill, okay? You go to the store, and that dollar bill is only worth 95 cents. Mm-hmm. And then you hold on to your dollar bill. Then tomorrow is worth a dollar ten. So the value is not regulated; it's, it's fluctuating. That is one of the greatest value right, a greatest risk right now. Uh, the future risk is going to be the 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 risk that government agencies such as the IRS and Secur- Securities Exchange Commission, uh, how deep will they be able to infiltrate uh, and 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 influence um, what's happening as far as the transaction history on these accounts. Mm. Okay. All right. Now I got a, I got another question. This one this was this was relevant um because I think and, you know, not not to not to down our people, but just based off of the historical record of how um African Americans, blacks in America, if you want to say melanated people, how do you choose to um identify? We are often the last to get on to the new technologies, new systems, you know, different money games. Um, as blacks in America, as African Americans, as melanated people, as Africans in America, um, how do you think we should prepare for this shift to digital capital, digital currency? And um, do you think that we should create our own form of cryptocurrency? Or is that a foolish thought in my head? That's not a foolish thought. We can uh, we can create things. Uh, we we've created many things long before the uh, the foundation of America was built. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, if we want to go back to to the land of, of the way things were from the beginning of time. Uh, some folks say, you know, we are still spending Solomon's money. All right, and King Solomon was was not in Europe. King Solomon was in Africa. All right, right. Uh, there's a, there's a reason. There's a reason why uh, all the countries in the world find their way to to Africa for for its um, natural resources, for its gold. Not even, gold, you know, is 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 the one of the least uh, of of the of the precious minerals in Africa. Um, hmm. There were minerals that they, that they use that have a greater value than gold, and you know where they're using them? They're using them in our, in our smartphones and in our computers. Uh, yes. They are. Some folks will call it colonizing. Other folks will say invading. Uh, hmm. Certain countries just to be able to extrapolate that material. So it is not a, it is not far fetched that we can do it because we've done it before. Uh, as a conspiracy theory, 
Some would even believe that Omar Gaddafi was, was assassinated because of the fact that he was getting a greater interest amongst African states uh, and, and, heads of, and, and, uh, uh, and, and head leaders there to develop their own currency, their, their, own, uh, uh, um, yeah, their own currency backing mm-hmm. that would compete with the American dollar. Now, that is still out there, and typically the way history goes, we may not ever find the truth about what happened to him a few years ago until maybe another 40, 50 years from now. But by that time, those, the culprits will be dead and gone. But here we go. As we as black folks, people of color, what can we do to get on in tune and in line with, with the understanding of cyber currency? The one thing that we need to do is understand what we're doing right now. Like I said a little bit earlier, we need to begin to focus on the areas of 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 not being materialistic, but being able to uh, accumulate value. We have to accumulate value. And the way we do that is threefold, through knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Because once we gravitate toward knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, no matter what they change it to, if they, if they change it from the um, uh, uh, paper or, or what I said, the, the cotton money, and they mm-hmm. change it from there to cryptocurrency, or they change it to uh, to a pair of Air Jordans. Whatever they change it to, if we develop the the mindset of being able to 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 work our money or work our currency to the point where it develops value within the community, no matter what happens outside, whatever this, if they decide to change it to pretzels. <laughs> then we know what we got to do to get some pretzels, okay? And not only get pretzels, maybe know how to own the machine that makes the pretzels. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so wherever it goes, remember, it's the mindset. And I tell folks all the time, I share with folks all the time, especially on Power Over Tomorrow, that wealth has nothing to do with money, but it has everything to do with mindset. Mm. Mm. So we basically got we, we 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 need to get our mind right <laughs> so we can get That's ahead right. of this um get ahead of this horizon you know because I just I just I just don't want us to be lagging you know and and and, and caught up because I mean, they can you know it's, money can be used as a control mechanism too you know so it's just you know just trying to think of where we how we should position ourselves you know. Um. Once again, uh, Brother Mitchell, can you give your information out uh, so people that may have joined us a little later in the uh, conversation, um, they can reach you if they have some questions? Of course, of course. You can reach me uh, just by going to my website at www.tsmitchell.com. Again, that's tsmitchell.com. That's our website. When you're on our website, you can sign up for our free financial newsletters that we send to you each and every month. Uh, there are videos, there are um, uh, legibles, so so whatever you need, we have that there for you. Also, you can download the financial apps we have for your smartphone. Uh, whether you have Google or, or Apple devices, we have that formatted for both. And of course, each and every Wednesday, here on Blog Talk Radio or on Everything with Kathy B. I am the host of Power Over Tomorrow, the 6 o'clock program here on Wednesday. Uh, so by all means, if you old-fashioned, and whether you got a rotary phone or, or a smartphone, you can give me a call at 803-348-4483. Again, 803-348-4483. All right, all right. This is... Mr. Tyrone S. Mitchell, financial advisor, wealth creator, wealth advisor. Um, Reverend Mitchell, before you go, though, um, you, you, you gave me something as you was breaking out knowledge, wisdom, understanding. Um, you had broken down. The way you explained it was very unique and it was precise and concise. I had to type it down. 
you were saying, I don't know if you want me to say it or if you if you got it off the top of your head, but you said knowledge is knowing what to do and what was wisdom and understanding. All right, well, well, you, you're a good student, brother. I like good students, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, knowledge is knowing what to do, okay? Um, wisdom is knowing why you're doing it, and understanding is, is knowing how to do it, right? Mm. So, so these are the mm. things that we have to do, you know. So we have to know what we're doing, how to do it, and why we're doing it. And those are all knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Mm. True indeed. True indeed. Well, I want to give you a, a big thank you for, you know, having this, participating in this discussion and, and bringing some light, you know, illuminating this uh, this topic. And it's definitely a hot topic. I think we're going to hear more about it as uh, the future uh, encroaches on us. So I definitely want to thank you for bringing your, your knowledge and your wisdom and expertise to the show. And I'm probably going to have to get you back on uh, a little later uh, on some follow-up episodes because I know everything is always changing. 